This is a project I've been thinking about for some time. I'm going to build a simple tracked vehicle that I'm later going to use in robotics development. This video is about mostly the mechanical design, although there is some coding coming up later. The plan is to make a single piece that can be printed multiple times, and that module can be used to make a track of any length, so you can make a custom vehicle. It's inspired by Power Twist belts, which do just that for making V belts for machine tools, although mine is going to be 3D printed. And I'm going to publish all the CAD and code, and you can find a link in the description to github where you can find it so that you can build your own if you want to I put together some of the belt there and even though it's quite tough and I had to use pliers to push it together it's actually really flexible and that's because each link is printed in NinjaFlex and NinjaFlex is made by NinjaTech and NinjaTech is owned by Fenner Drives who actually make power twist belts. So each of those goes through two links, the little head of the thing there with a the tab on goes through two other links so this one goes through two holes, the next one goes through two holes and so on and that gives us a nice thing on the bottom here which would normally run in the V track but that's going to grip on my wheels for driving it and on the other side I've printed in a little ridge so that we've got something to grip on the ground. So I've made a thing a bit like a water wheel that's got these teeth on and the plan is that it grips the inside of the belt between the tab and between the other edge there. So that seems to align pretty well. If I put that around there, then all of those seem to align and I just made this by trial and error and a bit of measuring. But we're not really going to know how it runs until we actually set up a whole belt and put another one on the other end and put it on a vehicle and try and run it. Now I have made this a kind of V shape, a bit like the original V belts, but I'm not sure if the belt's going to ride out on the V if this skews or the belt skews. So I'm going to print some more of these and put together a little vehicle with two tracks on and run it on the ground and see what happens. There we go, so I've just made a simple vehicle out of that and those wheels, the wheels have their own bearings in so I've just got some 8mm studding for now for the axles with nuts on each end and two 3D printed blocks attached to 2020 extrusion with T-nuts and some bolts on the other side so we can slide this in and out and tension it. So I think the pitch of the wheels is okay for these belts but I do find that they do ride up on those V's as I thought that they would which means that it tensions the belt too much and it gets a bit lumpy and eventually the belts will come off. So I'm going to redesign those wheels so they don't have those slopes on, they don't have the V-slot anymore, they've just got hard edges and then hopefully that'll hold the belt in a bit better. So these are the new ones which have got just straight edges and the old one had that V in or at least a partial V which is causing some problems. So I've printed all the new ones, let's get those on and see what happens. Right, here we go, so that seems to run a lot better and the belts don't come out anymore and they don't get super tight, so pretty happy with that. The pitch seems to be alright of those, so hopefully we can now power these wheels and power the tracks along. But before we look at that, it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor, and that is brilliant. I've been building things since I was a child, long before the internet existed, and even back in 2004 when I started building robots and writing about them on my website, the internet was a very different place. YouTube didn't even exist, so finding information was hard. A platform like Brilliant would have been a great help to me back then. Brilliant is maths and science simply done right. They inspire people to play with the ideas of STEM, that's science, technology, engineering and maths, and elevate it from something that some people often fear to a great experience of guided discovery. Brilliant features active learning because interactive problem solving is much more effective than just watching lectures. Learning is better when you discover something yourself rather than just memorising it. 
All of the courses are brilliant, are crafted by award-winning teachers, researchers and professionals from places like MIT, Microsoft, Google and more. Brilliant is interactive and engaging, a fun way to build your STEM and problem-solving skills. You can see maths and science in a new way by visually interacting with them. The courses show you that maths and science are essentially a way of thinking. As well as being able to learn with Brilliant on the web, there's also an app with the same content. I really like the computer science courses. I found one on artificial neural nets and also a course on algorithm fundamentals, which is really good for brushing up on basics. The first 200 people to sign up using my special link will get 20% off their annual subscription. That's brilliant.org slash James Bruton. And I put that link in the description to this video as well. So don't forget to sign up soon to get the discount. That's brilliant.org slash James Bruton. All right, now it's time to get back to those tank tracks. So now it's time to try and drive these wheels. So you'll have noticed I left a little stump on some of them and I've got a pulley that fits just on there. And that'll be glued on. And I always do these separately because it allows me to change it later or make them a different size and so on. And that'll be driven by a T5 belt. And I've added two ridiculously high power brushless motors. These are turning G Aero Drive 5055 280 kV motors. And I've used these before to power electric skateboards. So this is completely overpowered. They're about 1500 watts each, but we should have quite a lot of power there. Eventually when I do robotics with this, I'll get some worm gear driven gearboxes and DC motors, probably 20 watts or less. They'll sit neatly next to each other. But for now the motors are just too big. They won't fit next to each other. So I've got different length belts to get to each side. So we're gonna put some electronics in here and power these up and see what happens. I've installed this 3D printed plate on here, which has got a bit of a recess and two holes for some Velcro. That's gonna hold a battery and I've also got space for two ESCs. These are Hobby King X-Car 120 amp ESCs. They're completely overkill probably for this, but I happen to have some, so we're gonna use those. And I've also got this stump in here, which is gonna hold another platform. That's gonna be fitted on there so we can put some electronics on the back. I'm just using one of these normal car handsets that's got the throttle and the steering separately and that's channel one and channel two so let's power this on and those ESC should come up so now what happens is when we pull the throttle it runs one side and we've still got braking on reverse so we have to do a little double click to go the other way so that one runs okay and the other side is actually tied to the steering So what we need to do though really is make sure that when we pull the throttle they both run and the steering makes one go faster or slower so it steers. But to do that we're going to have to put a bit more logic in there. Eventually I want to turn this into a more intelligent robot at which point I'll probably downgrade the motors anyway to geared DC motors with gearboxes so we can run those tracks slower and use normal motor drivers and then we'll have an Arduino or something more intelligent to control it. But for now we're just going to make it into a radio controlled tank. So I'm going to make an Arduino based radio controlled tank mixer that does differential drive from the two channels. I stole this diagram from the internet and it shows what comes out of an RC receiver when you move the control sticks on an RC transmitter. Either this or this or if you get a normal drone transmitter then it has sticks but it's all the same. So basically depending on the position of the control a pulse comes out of the receiver and it varies in length between one millisecond and two milliseconds typically from one end of the control to the other. So what we need to do to read those values is basically just read a pulse that comes out of that radio control receiver with the Arduino. Now there is a command on the Arduino called pulse in that we can put in the code and that will read a pulse length and that will tell us how long that pulse is and give us the value. So that sounds like what we need, but actually it's not very reliable because it starts timing whenever the code loop comes around and we write pulse in and then that activates and it starts timing, but that may not be when the pulse starts on the radio control receiver precisely. So we tend to get some fluctuations in the value. So instead what we're gonna do is monitor the Arduino pin with an interrupt and then actually start the timing exactly when that pulse starts to rise high and stop it when it goes low. We'll start by just reading those pulse lengths and for that we need two outputs, PWM1 and PWM2, one for each channel. We've also got two variables we're gonna to use to bookmark the time to time how long they are. I've marked my two pins as input that I'm using and I've attached those to two interrupts which are functions which live down at the bottom. So these are interrupt zero and interrupt one which are pins two and three. We've also got a serial port open so we can look at the answers. My main loop is just printing the answers and all the magic happens in the interrupt service routine. So whenever a pin changes state, it runs a function called time it one. And if the second interrupt changes state, it runs time it two and those live at the bottom. And all those are doing is basically saying if the pin's high, 
start the timer by bookmarking the time into that variable and if it's low else then basically take the time away and stop that timer and give us the answer and it does that for each of the pins. We're writing those values to the serial terminal and basically now we can see the values. You'll see there is a bit of jitter but it's nothing like you get if you use pulse in. So now if I pull this forward and backwards we should get a value between 1000 and 2000 roughly and the same for the steering. Now we've got those values it's time to make the tank drive mixer so what we want is the throttle to activate both of the motors so we can just get that variable and write it out with the servo library to both ESC so they both go forwards or backwards depending on that value so that's very simple but then to steer what we want to do is take the middle position of this stick which is basically 1500 and add the difference onto one and take it away from the other. So in the middle, basically we've got 1500, so we take nothing or add nothing to either side. But as we start to move it, it makes one belt go faster and the other one go slower or the other way around. So that would add and subtract from the throttle so it can go forwards and steer, or when it's stationary, we just get a positive and negative swing. So one track goes forwards and one track goes backwards. All I've added now are two variables for the output and then those are equal to the PWM for the throttle, so both tracks go forward when I pull the throttle, and one is plus PWM2 minus 1500, because those values centre around 1500, so we need it to pivot around zero, so we get a plus or minus value to add or subtract, and the other one, which is the other channel, output 2, takes that value away, and that's pretty much it. I have constrained the values here, because with those motors it's far too fast to be controllable, and then we write those out using the servo library and that's because normally we'd attach RC servos to that remote control receiver. So now if I pull the trigger both of those should go forwards as you'd expect and we've still got braking on reverse so we need that little double click to get backwards and they go slower backwards as well and that's all built into the ESC. There is a programming card and you can change some parameters but I don't have one so we're stuck with that for now and then obviously turning on the spot we turn this and that should make one track go forward and one go backwards. We've still got that braking on reverse on the ESC, so the other way makes it do it the other way. And if I go forwards, and I turn this, then we should see one track speed up and one slow down until it breaks. So we can drive around corners. That went pretty well, I'm pretty happy with that. You'll notice though the tracks seem to come off sometimes and pop back on when I drive straight again, and that's because they are actually quite stretchy because they're made of Ninja Flex. So it might be worth trying a slightly more rigid flexible material like Ninja Flex Cheetah or one of the other TPUs that isn't quite so stretchy but still flexible, and then probably the tracks won't be able to stretch and just come off onto the bigger part of the wheel. But other than that, it's pretty good. Those tracks really grip and they're really good at climbing over things, and it seems to turn fine on a smooth floor, so that's pretty good. Obviously, the problem with tanks is if the floor surface is too grippy, 
they get stuck anyway and it causes more friction, but not too many problems with those giant motors I've got. Next time in this series, I'm going to be doing something more intelligent with it and trying to do some navigation using vision recognition or something like that, probably with a Jetson Nano, so check back for that. I've published all the Canon code though so far, and all of that's available for free, and the link is in the description. But if you want to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are there as well. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and don't forget to check the link out in the description to my special link so you can get the discount. All right, that's all for now.